Hi there. Um, so I've just gone live a few minutes early um, just to kind of make sure that my microphone's working. I'm using belive.tv, which is some technology I've not used before. Um, so if anybody is tuned in and if you could let me know um, whether you can hear me or not, that would be fabulous. And typically it's really windy in the shed today. So for those of you who haven't taken part in any of my live broadcasts before, tiny little bit of housekeeping. My business is called Herding Cats for a reason. I have three cats and they tend to jump on board whenever I'm doing anything live. Now, thankfully, they're not in the shed today. Um, but if you do hear me meowing <laughs> and I do disappear at some point, it means I've got to let them in the shed. So just to make you aware of that. Um, so we shall start in around about three minutes time. If you have any questions about blogging, then do post them in the comments box um, and I'll try and answer as many as I can. We have had some sent in um, through Messenger as well, so I'm going to go through those. Uh, and if you are on board and you're watching, then please do say hi. I'm having to flick between a couple of pages, so just bear with me. Here we go. Okay, so good morning. My name's Catherine. I'm the founder of Herding Cats Publishing and I'm doing a live Q&A today on blogging. Um, if you are watching live, then do let me know if you can hear me okay. Um, I'm using a uh, new technology that I haven't used before, uh, Be Live TV. Um, so if you, can, if you can hear me, please do let me know. So <clears throat> as I said, my name's Kat. I'm the founder of Herding Cats Publishing. I'm a, a freelance journalist, a magazine editor, and I've also been blogging since 2008. Um, I've done it for myself and built blogs successfully and earned money through it. Uh, and I've also built successful blogs for clients. I now work as a blog mentor and help small businesses, entrepreneurs and business owners um, start their blogs and generate traffic and build a sales funnel and generate leads through it. So um, we do have a five day blog challenge coming up on the 19th of June, which you can sign up for. I'll leave um, the details in the comments box, but it's www.herdingcatspublishing.co.uk forward slash June blog challenge. So if you go on there and you find all the details you can to set up. Okay, so 
we have had some questions sent in already, so I'll, I'll crack on with those. So one of the first ones from a lady called Viola, um, how to write your first blog post. So I think a lot of people get hung up on this. Um, and I think it's about kind of putting your written word into the public domain and it can feel a little bit intimidating, a little bit scary. Um, pressing publish can be really hard. Uh, I know when I do a lot of my writing, sometimes I think, oh, that's not good enough. I'm not gonna publish that. Um, but actually, the best way is to just do it. Um, in terms of structuring your, your blog post, you want to think of it as a funnel. So you've got kind of your main headline at the top. So what pain point are you answering, are you dealing with, or what query or question are you answering? So summarize that at the top and then work your way through beginning, middle, end, and end with a summary of all the points that you've gone through. If you think of it, like I say, as a funnel and work through it like that, um, it should give you a kind of a structure to follow but it also should give you confidence that what you're writing is actually going to be um in a format that people will read because people read blogs in different ways um so you're starting with the main point you're going into the middle to discuss it and then you come into the end to the conclusion so i hope that helps you um angela asked how can i believe people want to read my blog Okay, well, there are various different ways of finding out if people are reading your blog. Um, I would say if you're, whatever blogging platform you're on, whether that's WordPress, eHost, um, Squarespace, whoever, always leave the blog comments on so that people can comment on your blog. It helps you know that somebody's read it, um, but it also helps with SEO. Um, so, you know, from, from that point of view, whether somebody's reading it or not. Also, always, always, always have Google Analytics set up or some kind of static stat tracker attached to your blog as well and review it regularly. So what I do with mine is at the end of every month, obviously I've got Google Analytics and you can go in and you can drill down on the content. You can see on there which are your most popular posts. I know, for example, on my blog, um, my most popular posts are the how-to. And generally in blogging, it is the how-to ones that are the most successful. Um, because you're answering somebody's pain point or somebody's query. So have a look at the content that's working and create a series of blog posts around the most successful ones that you have. So as an example for the Herding Cats blog, I set up a series of, well, set up a series of posts around social media. Um, is your business media ready? So talking about blogs that were only posts that were sharing news. Um, and then is your business social media ready? So did you have your Twitter profiles, your Instagram, Facebook page where they all saying the same thing and then um, we carried on throughout that series so that you were taking people on a journey and they are still my most popular three posts that I've written when I go look back in the statistics but without the statistics yeah you don't know who's reading your blog without the statistics and the comments you don't know who's reading your blog um, so I would say that's absolutely crucial. Um, Janelle asked does everyone need a blog and does every blog have a purpose? Well, there's a couple of answers to that, really. If you're a business, then yes. If you have a business, yes, you do need a blog. It's a way of sharing your knowledge and your expertise with your target market. Um, it makes you stand out as a thought leader and it can lead to all kinds of other opportunities. I know from blogs that I've had in the past, it's led me to get media coverage. It's led me to write for the Huffington Post for B Daily um, and various other online platforms. So as well as getting your media exposure, it's also telling your potential customer what expertise you've got in that area. Comes down again to having a niche. Um, the most successful blogs do have a niche and focus on one thing. Um, so my Herding Cats blog, for example, is all about working with the media and online exposure. So everything I write is to do with that. Um, and the purpose of a blog really, as I say, is to make sure and to educate your audience as well. So maybe it's a product that's new to the market or it's a service that many people haven't tried before. But if you can explain to them um, what it is that the, what it is that product can do, what are the benefits, that's really important, explaining the benefits, then without being salesy, you're providing useful and unique information. And that's what blogging is primarily all about. 
um, driving quality traffic. So yeah, a couple of things that you can do. Um, I'm not necessarily a big fan of posting your blog posts in blogger groups on Facebook and in forums because you tend to get false traffic then. You may have a spike one day, it may go down the next if you're not continually keeping up with it. But also, are those people your target market? So the way to drive quality traffic is obviously link it out through social media, do your research, find out where your target market are, where do they hang out, are they on Twitter, are they on Facebook, are there groups specifically for that market on Facebook? Do they hang out on Instagram? And through sharing the links back to your blog, um, that way you'll be driving quality traffic that's targeted to the audience that you're looking to reach for. Um, another way of doing it as well is, is building up a network of other bloggers. So if you're, say, in the mom's market or the mother and baby market and you have a network of people, then go in and comment on each other's blogs because you're sharing valuable advice, you're sharing similar blog posts and you've got a similar target market. But if you are interconnecting with those people as well and collaborating, then that will also result in quality traffic. Another way of driving traffic is guest blogging. And this is something that is quite often overlooked. So staying with the mother and baby thing for a minute, if you, for example, if somebody sells baby wear and somebody sells baby bags, then there's obviously a, a collaboration that you can have there and one can blog for the other. So you, you're reaching out to their audience and they're reaching out to your audience, which gives you more exposure. You can also ask to be included on their email list. So if they send, if they send a weekly or monthly newsletter out highlighting the blogs that have been on their blog page, then they can include that, which is going to lead you into an audience of thousands. Again, you're in a similar market, you're in a similar niche, you're not necessarily competing, um, but it's going to be going out to your target market. Um, so I hope that kind of answers that question. <laughs> um, another way, which other one have we got? So why, why do people read blogs? Well, this is really interesting for me because I've worked online since about 2008 and I've also worked for a print magazine. More recently, I've worked for a print magazine. And one of the hardest things with a print magazine, the one I worked for was free. Um, you, had to, you had to generate advertising revenue through it. So print markets seen a decline because it's cheaper to advertise online and it's cheaper to produce stuff online as well. So to produce articles, look at the Huffington Post. If that had been a printed magazine, would that have worked? Possibly not. Um, so, I forgot where I want now. Oh yeah, so so people tend to read blogs more than they do printed printed articles and printed newspapers. I'm not saying that that industry is dying; it definitely isn't. But today's browser tends to jump on blogs to find more information, um, and it's also quicker. So, depending on how the blog's written, if you're using bullet points, for example, short sentences, short paragraphs images people tend to take more information from a blog than they do from a printed newspaper or a printed magazine the other thing as well is blogs can also as such a broad term now um reviews are a massive way of blogging as well so if you're looking for a hotel online um nine times out of ten people will then go and look for reviews and those reviews can take the form of a blog now if you're looking for a holiday online or a hotel online you're not going to then go look for a printed magazine with it on it's quicker just to jump onto a search engine and find that review on there um, so that is why people read blogs i would say and then louisa has asked how do we deal with seo okay so when you're writing a blog forget about seo you want to write naturally you don't want to keyword stuff it because you'll just be penalized for that what you need to do is write is find your tone of voice, which I'll come on to in a second, um, find your tone of voice and then write in a very natural language. Try not to use acronyms or industry specific words. Write as if you were having a chat with somebody because this is what you, you, you're kind of selling yourself through the blog. You're selling your expertise through the blog. Um, once you've written the blog post, 
there are things that you can do to then make it SEO friendly. So adding H1 tags, for example, making sure that the images have alt tags on them, adding meta tags as well, um, are all good ways of um, dealing with SEO. Yes, use keywords, find out what your keywords are, but again, use them in a very natural sense. Okay, so um, the other question that we had was, um, what's the difference between a blog and an article? So an article tends to be longer and it tends to be more heavily laden with industry specific um, information. A blog tends to be more like a chat between friends is, is how I would view it anyway. Um, and coming back to the tone of voice as well, you would use a very different tone of voice in an article than you would in a blog. If you've done your market research, and by that I mean finding out where your target market are now online. So, for example, um, what social media do they use? What blogs are they already reading? Where are they from? How old are they? What are their hobbies and interests? Um, if you find out all that and become a little bit of a stalker, if I'm honest, um, and have a look at other blog posts and find a, a tone of voice that suits you, um, but it's also written in the same kind of language as um, your target market would, would use. So, for example, somebody in kind of 50s to 60 age bracket would write very differently to somebody in a 20 to 25 year old bracket. The, the terms that they would use, the language that they would use would be very different. So um, it's finding out how your target market speak really and using language that they would understand but also it's got to fit with you your personality has to come through and your passion for what you do has to come through as well so when you're blogging all that has to be kind of transferred down onto onto the page it takes practice blogging is no quick win um, it does take time but once you've done kind of your first five or six blog posts you'll find that you'll get into a, a very natural rhythm um, Okay, so another question we have had in is how do you make money from blogging? Okay, well, there are several ways that you can do this. There's affiliate marketing, sponsorship, advertising. They're the kind of the three main ones. So affiliate marketing are things like running um, Amazon affiliates, which is brilliant. So you sign up for an Amazon account, you get an affiliate key, and you add that into your um, into your blog, into your blogging platform, and then Amazon will show relevant adverts to the topic that you're talking about. So people can click on buy it. You get then you then get a percentage of that revenue. Might only be small, but over time, not sure what that one, but over time, um, it, it can build up. Um, Google run a similar affiliate program as well. So Google, uh, it's like it's Google like Google AdWords and it'll pop up on your blog, people click the link and if they go through and purchase, you get something for that as well. Um, sponsorship, so if you're in a niche area, fashion bloggers, food bloggers, that kind of thing. Um, if you want to talk to the big companies, they can sponsor your blog and they'll either pay you per blog post or maybe a small monthly retainer. And advertising as well. Um, when you're thinking of your theme and how you can set your um, blog up, if you want to run advertising, then find one where you can in, build, have an ad, have an ad plugin <laughs> available to you. And this works very successfully, as partic particularly for in the wedding market. Um, so you can advertise venues, wedding dresses, photographers, shoes, jewelry, all that kind of thing. Um, you have to build the traffic to be able to get that. Um, and it's not a quick win. It doesn't happen overnight. But if you're blogging consistently, then um, your traffic will build and eventually you can go to the big um, outlets and say, this is my blog. Would you be interested in sponsoring me? I get over a million views per month um, or to potential advertisers and say, we have a click through rate of 58% of you know 20% of that turns into sales. So you need to build up your statistics before you can start going out and blogging. Again, one of the best ways to build that is by building a blogging community within your niche. Um, I've got experience with this and it really does work. Um, right, let me just jump on to Facebook and see if we have had any more questions in. Let's see. No. 
Okay, so um, obviously that's a lot of information to take in in a very short um, broadcast. So if you are interested in taking part in the five day blog challenge where we go into this in an awful lot more detail, then um, please do sign up. It's herdingcatspublishing.co.uk forward slash June blog challenge. I will post the link into the comments section. And if you have any questions or you'd like to have a one to one with me, then please just let me know and I'll get back to you as soon as you can. Thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to catching up with you next time.